All right, so I'm gonna show you how to get information from your hard drive off of a Mac. You're just gonna need a few things. You'll need one USB drive that can uh, mount an operating system on. This one's eight gigabytes, so that should be plenty. I wouldn't get anything smaller, but six gigabytes might work. Uh, you'll need some other medium to actually move your files to that you're trying to save. In this case, I'm just gonna be saving an arbitrary file, so I'm gonna use another flash drive, but if you're trying to back up an entire hard drive, then obviously you'd want some sort of external hard drive. And then you'll also need a ethernet connection or a dongle that does ethernet to USB-C or USB, depending on the machine you're using. Unfortunately, the what I've tried on this machine, and this is my only Mac, the Wi-Fi drivers never work with the Ubuntu operating system, so um, the ethernet is required. Um, and then everything else you'll need will be on the software side. So let's go into that. So the first piece of software that you'll need will be a program called Belina Etcher. And that's this green box right here. You can download that pretty simply by following the link in the description. Um, and it's a very widely used application for essentially taking a, a host image, a disk image of an operating system and putting it onto a flash drive. Um, so if you just search Belina Etcher, it'll be the, the top thing and you can just download it and um, install it normally. The second thing that you'll need is gonna be a, um, a specific version of Ubuntu. Um, so Ubuntu is an operating system that is a Linux operating system and it's a very widely used one and there's a lot of tools that are developed for it and in this case there's one particular tool that we need. Um, so we're going to go to download and we're going to go to Ubuntu desktop. Um, and we don't actually want the latest version, we want a slightly older version. So we're going to click on alternative downloads and we're going to download version 20 which is um, Focal Fossa. And we'll download the desktop version, 64-bit. It should be an AMD, and actually this is the wrong link, this is the torrent, um, uh, but it's right here. So Ubuntu 20.04 LTS Focal Fossa. And you can just follow the link directly. And we're gonna want the um, AMD 64 desktop image. So go ahead and download that. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not gonna download it again. Once you've installed Belina Etcher, just open it up. And at this point in time, you wanna make sure that um, we have our first USB drive plugged in. So this is gonna be the USB that we're going to install Ubuntu onto. Uh, so this USB is going to be completely wiped of all of its data, so make sure you have anything important off of it. Um, so go ahead and plug that into your machine and then once you have that all set up uh, and plugged in we're gonna go ahead and click uh, in this case we're just gonna ignore so this is the machine recognizing that it's been plugged in we're gonna flash from file and we're going to select our Ubuntu file so in this case I have two of them but I want this one which is Ubuntu 20.04.4 so we're gonna open that and then we're going to select our target. And right now I only have one USB drive plugged in. Um, and that's going to be my 8 gigabyte file. And again, if you have multiple things plugged in, uh, make sure that you are selecting the right one. Or if, just to be safe, unplug everything else and just plug in the USB drive you want to install the operating system to. Um, this can all be undone at the end, but you cannot undo deleting the files, which is the next step that's gonna happen. So please make sure you're using an empty USB drive. There will be no way for you to get those files off of it if you are not using an empty drive. Um, and once you've selected it, you can then flash the operating system onto that USB drive. Um, in this case, it's gonna need a little password for that. And theoretically, you should be able to flash this on any operating system. So you could download Belina Etcher and Ubuntu 20.04 on a Windows computer or a Linux computer and use the exact same process that we're using here in order to get uh, essentially just a USB drive that can load up the operating system. 
Now we're not going to actually be installing the operating system, we're just going to be utilizing it from the flash drive in order to recover our files. So I'm going to fast forward through this part right here and I will get back to you once the USB drive is ready to go. Okay, and once the Bellina Etcher says that everything's done, don't click initialize, don't click eject, just click ignore. Now we're ready to turn off our machine. So we'll just press shut down and shut it down all the way. So the next step is gonna be somewhat dependent on the keyboard that you have. In this case, I just have a standard keyboard. It's not one made for Mac or anything. So when I turn on the Mac, Right after I hear the power sound, I'm going to hold the Alt key. And I'm going to keep holding that Alt key until um, I see a very specific boot menu. So I'm going to press the button. I hear the sound, and I'm holding the Alt key. If this was an Apple keyboard, I believe the equivalent is the Option key. Um, but just keep it hold, held down until um, we get into this menu. So this is going to be our boot menu, and we can use the keyboard arrows to move over. So this thing that's uh, just untitled, that's our normal uh, location where our operating system, the Mac OS, exists. And we want to go into our first uh, partition here, which is coming from the USB drive, and that's going to be our Ubuntu image. So I'm just, you know, I use the arrow keys to move over and I'm just gonna press the enter or the return key, depending on your keyboard. And then when you get to this menu, just press enter again to load into Ubuntu regular. Okay, so now we see that there's gonna be this Ubuntu loading screen. This might take a while, so I will fast forward and, uh, until we get to the point where we can actually interact with the operating system. You can skip this disk checking process if you want, but uh, just to be safe, you can let it continue. So I'm going to let it continue and I'll fast forward until the end. Okay, so once we get to this stage, we're going to be presented with a screen. And what we want to do is we want to try Ubuntu. We do not want to install it. Installing means we would have to replace some of our files on our hard drive in order to have the operating system exist on our hard drive. And instead, we just want to try the operating system. And the reason for all of this is that we can actually use Ubuntu as an operating system to access the files on the hard drive without being dependent on the operating system. So sometimes OS X and even iOS will run into problems where if they're really low on memory or you get a bad update, you become unable to actually boot the computer to a stage where you can access the files. And by booting into Ubuntu instead, we can access those files. So for a lot of different operating systems, like uh, most Ubuntu or most Linux distros and Windows distros, you can just uh, directly open your volume. So in this case, I have a 500 gigabyte volume. That's where my max data lives. And for again, for most systems, you can just click on this and it would open. But Apple annoyingly uses their own file type system called APFS, which is not a standard file type system. Um, so we, we need to actually install some stuff in order to access this file format. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to open the terminal. You can click show applications and then you can just search for terminal and it's right there. Um, and the terminal is going to allow us to input commands. So the first thing we're going to want to do is press sudo apt get update. And this is just going to update all the repositories. They should be all very up to date because we just um, downloaded it from the internet. So it shouldn't be too weird. Now we need to add a repository. So it's not important for you to understand what these commands are doing, but I'll say it anyway. Um, we're essentially just going to be adding a location online where uh, we're able to download programs from. And in this case, we're going to be downloading them from the universe, which is an official Ubuntu repository. So this isn't a third party thing, so we don't have to do any 
additional certification uh, exemptions or exceptions. It's just, you know, Ubuntu knows that this is a trusted repository and all of the packages that we get from it um, should also be trusted. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, a program by doing sudo apt-get install. And uh, again, you'll just be able to um, copy and paste these commands, but it's going to be lib lib f s a p f s hyphen utils. Okay. And we're just going to click yes. So you just press enter for this. And this is going to install our utils that are going to allow us to actually mount um, the uh, the Mac operating system, or not the Mac operating system, but the Mac hard drive. Okay. So for the next thing, we're going to actually see where our hard drive exists. So we're going to do sudo fdisk hyphen L. And what we're looking for is the uh, 500 gigabyte file. So in this case, I see 465. So that must be it. And it exists at this location, slash dev slash SDA2. So now we can actually mount that in order to uh, access the files. So um, where you mount it is not super important, but you want to be able to access it. Uh, I'm going to mount it to the root directory. So I'm going to type cd dot dot, cd dot dot, cd dot dot. And now we exist in the root directory. And if I press LS, I can see um, this. And actually, I'm going to I'm going to go into I'm going to do it into home, actually. So now we're in the home directory and I'm going to create a new directory by doing make dir and I'm just going to call it uh, mount. So this is going to um, so sorry, sudo make dir mount and this is going to create a new directory called mount. And now I'm going to mount the actual hard drive by using sudo f s a p f s mount slash f the number one. And now we're going to type that uh, location of our hard drive. So if we scroll up on the terminal, we can see that it's slash dev slash sda2. So slash dev slash SDA2. It might be something totally different for you, so make sure that you check this yourself. And now we're going to put where we actually want this to be mounted. So we want it to be mounted at in the home slash mount. And it has to be an empty directory, which is why I made a new one. Okay, and now we've received uh, this, this command, which is just saying, okay, you mounted it. Um, and now we need to open up the Windows Explorer, similar to Finder or Windows Explorer in Windows, um, in sudo mode. So we're going to do sudo xdg hyphen open, and we're going to press the period, or type in a period. And now we have this Windows Explorer-like thing, Finder-like thing, where we see our folder mount. And now we can click on that and we have access to our um, hard drive. So in this case, I don't have a lot of files on my Mac, but I do have this little, you know, snapshot I took of, of a screen at some point. And what you can do now um, is actually, so we can actually plug in the new USB drive that we want to transfer our data to, or we can, you know, plug in our external hard drive plug that in there. And then once we have that open, um, we can just directly drag and drop our files. Um, so actually, I think this needs to be open with with sudo as well. So we'll need to open a another terminal. And, and then it's not letting me open in uh, copy and paste. So we'll just copy it like this. And we can um, this is our new USB 
and we can go into users, admin, desktop, we could just copy that over. So as long as you have both of these open as a an administrator, which in this case is the sudo command, you'll be able to move all of your files. So you can literally just drag all the files you want into your new system. And then once you're ready to um, eject it, you can just unmount it. And now I could safely take out the, you know, this, the yellow USB that I plugged in. And then once I'm done copying all my files, um, we can just shut down this machine and, you know, attempt to reformat the hard drive if we want to switch operating systems or use a recovery disk to actually get our Mac system working again. So hopefully that was useful. Um, it, hopefully it was easy to follow and good luck.